Okay, let's start by introducing the new Modeling with Excel filter. So what was the rationale behind this Modeling with Excel filter? What we learned that is that Modeling with Delimited Files are reality. They are actually not very bad from the perspective of having everything at one, at one place, knowing what is up to date. So from the management perspective, they are ideal. Uh, they are just not ideal because the translation usually happens through various people and not just one person. So this is the reason why multilingual delimited files are normally not supported by translation tools because translation tools think about a file being translated, but here it is just a part of a file being translated. So what we needed to do is introduce a new concept of filters which is the multilingual filters. And this is the reason why the multilingual delimited filter works somewhat differently from the others. I would not normally hold a webinar on any new filter that we create, but this is a completely different world. And therefore, we decided to um, have an introduction here. It is not a single filter. It is actually two filters that we have built in. And the name of this is Multilingual Delimited Text Filter. This is how you can see that in MemoQ. And this single text filter can be used for both CSV, so comma-separated values files, and Microsoft Excel files. Both of them are structural, both of them are very uh, similar. Any CSV file can be saved as a MS Excel file, but not every Excel file can be saved as a CSV file because it doesn't store formatting. However, uh, because these are actually two filters, the configuration options are also different. And one thing that I would like to draw your attention to is that the multilingual support is only available in the Project Manager Edition. This doesn't mean that if you own the Translator Pro Edition, the multilingual delimited text filter does not help you. But it means that if you have more than two languages that you would like to process, so if you're not talking about a bilingual delimited text filter, but a real multilingual delimited text filter, then you need to have the Project Manager Edition. If you have a Translator Pro Edition, uh, there is an upgrade path to that. Uh, please feel free to contact sales at killgrade.com if you're interested in having multiple languages processed with the tool. If you don't have that, you can still process a multilingual Excel or CSV file, but only two languages at a time. So what are the typical things in uh, Microsoft Excel, in the multilingual Excel? One thing is that multilingual Excel is somewhat of a standard, but it is not really a standard. It's not a standard like, for example, different XML flavors. But in most cases, what we have seen is that uh, one language is one column, or one type of information is one column. So this is the abstraction that we needed to have. This abstraction is not there in the normal Excel filter that we provide. So the first thing is that structural information is very typical in the multilingual. Uh, I'm talking about multilingual Excel files, but also think about CSV when I mention that. Uh, in such files, for example, you can, see, you can see an example here. There's the English, there's the German, and there is also a column that describes where this string appears. Very often multilingual Excel is used to translate software strings. The other typical use is the translation of catalogs. This is what we had also seen. Conditions are also typical. So you can sometimes have uh, conditions for non-inclusion. I don't want to include this here if there is a certain value in, let's say, the instruction field here. So here the condition is do not import if instruction equals leave it untranslated. And then OK will not import for translation. Colors are also typical. For example, sometimes your customer says, well, do not worry about red background color cells. Those need, need them to be translated. But comments are also typical. There's the English, there's the German. And there is, I left this instruction, but it's actually a comment that here, sunset refers to the name of the boulevard, not the time of the day. So probably in German, sunset would remain sunset. And also the large files are very typical. So with, with these multilingual files, the biggest file that we had to process so far with this filter 
plus 70 megabyte CSV. So you can imagine how big that is. And that was just bilingual. That wasn't even multilingual. And the HTML tags in the Excel files are also very typical. So these are the things that our multilingual Excel filter addresses. What else? Well, was it possible to translate multilingual Excel files before? Obviously it was. Uh, but it was a bit cumbersome. Because, first of all, there is the issue of filling the TM. So there was a multilingual Excel file that already had some translations in. So what did you do? You could only align that. And the best way to align it was the structural alignment. Structural alignment was able to use, this was introduced in MemoQ4, it was able to take the information like which cell a certain text comes from to have some hard boundaries in alignment. So with structural alignment, you can say that cell A1 is always cell A1 in the target file, cell A2 is always cell A2, and so on and so forth. But then when it comes to alignment, when it comes to importing the information and filling the TM, it was always so that uh, you first had to prepare the files because you had to copy the source to the target or the target to the source because these strings needed to be in the identical segments. So A1, A1, A2, A2, and it, you couldn't align structurally A1 to uh, B1 and A2 to B2. You had to take B, the column B and copy that into column A and save it as a separate file so it was a bit cumbersome. The other thing was that you could either import the contents into a TM if you saved the file as a CSV file and import that into the TM, or if you did this alignment. Now, if you saved the file as a CSV, the problem was that uh, any tagging was lost. So basically, if you were using a cascading filter on the Excel file, then the TM would not give you 100% matches. I mean, I'm just giving you the historical background. If you don't fully follow me, then just be happy about it, because these were the pitfalls of localizing multilingual Excel in MemoQ. And what we found, and this is where it becomes relevant, was that a lot of people decided that in Excel, what you get is normally one string or like one sentence, two sentences, maximum three. And why bother with the segmentation? You are not going to reuse this information. Uh, it's not going to give you so much productivity gain as if you would just simply delete all the segmentation and say that I want an alignment where A1 is referring to A1. And no matter if it's one sentence or one word, or three sentences, it's going to be matched uh, exactly. Now, this is why we thought that it's important to be able to directly import also material that is there in the target and get that either in a TM or just in the bilingual document. Now, if you want to get that into the TM or the corpus, that means that you will have to confirm all the segments, but they will appear directly in a bilingual document. So there is no segmentation in this filter. No matter what your segmentation rules are, the segmentation is going to be always one cell at a time. The other thing that I would like to draw your attention to is that in Excel, you cannot have inline formatting within the cells. This is something that is not typical in uh, multilingual Excel files, but basically you cannot have like uh, a cell in Excel with a single bold word in it and everything as just normal typeface. So there is no inline formatting. And if uh, in your Excel cell there is inline formatting, MemoQ just ignores that. There's also one more thing. You have to be very much aware what you use as the target language. Because if you export in all languages mode, then you will get different results than if you export with individual languages. Why is this? If you export with individual languages, let's say you've got a project English into French or German. If you export the French, then the English will obviously remain intact and also the German will remain 
intact, meaning that everything that was there in the original file will be written into that. If you export it to German, the German translations will be there, but the French won't change. Whereas if you export in all languages mode from a multilingual project, then both the German and the French will change. So this is important because this way there is a bilingual workflow that enables you to have everything else intact and just your language translated.